Welcome into Falcons today. Coming up on this edition of the show, we're going to react to Mel Kuyper's latest big board because Atlanta at pick number eight, they got to have a few uh, few plans in place, right? They should not go into the draft with just one guy at the top of their board and zero in on him. They have to be ready to be flexible in case some chaos happens between picks one through seven. Now, first, let me just say this. Free agency will change things. If the Falcons go out in free agency and they sign edge rusher Josh Allen and Jadeveon Clowney, Darius Smith, Josh Uche, Leonard Floyd, they're probably not going to go edge rusher at number eight. And the same is true if they sign a big-name wide receiver. So don't focus too much on the position. For now, just take the next month and a half and focus on learning the best players. And then once we get through free agency and we have a list of our favorite players, we can look at the positions and figure out what the biggest need is. But for now, focus on the players, not so much the positions in Atlanta's needs. So without th- without further ado, let's look at Mel Kuyper's big board. He put out top 25 names, and here is one through five. Number one, no real surprise, USC quarterback Caleb Williams. Number two, Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver out of Ohio State. Jaden Daniels comes in at number three, ahead of Drake May at number five, and Roma Dunze sandwiches both Daniels and May. Now, don't get your heart set on Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison. No chance they are there at number eight. And unless Atlanta moves up, they're going to be looking at maybe someone like Jaden Daniels, Roma Dunze, or Drake May. So let's talk about Jaden Daniels and Drake May for a moment because I have heard some very low-level whispers and chatter that Drake May could fall a little bit in the draft. And maybe Atlanta at 8 could be the beneficiary of a no-good-reason slip out of Drake May. Or maybe Drake May goes where I think he goes, which is number 2, and Jaden Daniels could be the play. Now, when talking about these two quarterbacks, I think they are both studs. I think they are both going to be successful NFL quarterbacks. I know every single year, quarterbacks always look so good coming out of college, and there's no way they miss. And then you get guys like Sam Darnold, where everything looked great at USC. Why didn't it work out? Uh, That's not the case this year. I mean, maybe I'm just a prisoner of the moment, but I really do think Drake May and Jane Daniels are the real deal. I think this quarterback class is the best one we have seen in decades, maybe even, when we look back at it. Daniels and Drake May, you can't go wrong with either one. Let's move on to Mel Kuyper's big board picks or rankings number 6 through 10. At number 6, he has Malik Neighbors, wide receiver from LSU. Number 7, the local Brock Bowers from UGA. At number 8, it's the Notre Dame tackle Joe Alt, followed by Olu Fashanu, a Penn State tackle. And then Dallas Turner, the outside linebacker slash edge rusher out of Alabama at number 10. Now let's focus on the top two wide receivers after Marvin Harrison Jr. because he's not going to be available to Atlanta most likely. Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbors. Let's talk about these two guys because both put up tremendous seasons in 2023. Let's first start off by talking about Roma Dunze. He's six foot three, 217 pounds. He's got a very rare combination of size and speed. Every single year in the draft, there are fast guys. There's going to be a fast guy in this year's draft, and there's going to be a fast guy in next year's draft. You don't often see, though, fast and six foot three. Usually it's one or the other. Roma Dunze, he's got both. And on top of that, he's just an athletic freak. He really is a star wide receiver in the making. And like how I said, this quarterback class is loaded. Maybe I'm just being a prisoner of the moment, but I think this wide receiver class is loaded. Now, that's not the same for all positions this year. I don't think it's a good running back class. I don't think it's a very good edge rusher class. But it's a great quarterback and wide receiver class. Something Atlanta needs of this offseason. Now, let's talk about Malik Neighbors. He's six foot, 200 pounds. Now, speed is his best trait. Roma Dunze is fast. Neighbors is faster. And he can take the top off the defense. He is a big play machine. And just because one guy is good at something doesn't mean another guy isn't very good at that. But when you think about what Malik Neighbors did so well last year in Baton Rouge, it is the big play factor. And every single year, NFL GMs just start moving big play factorness 
up their priorities because they are looking for guys who can take the top off the defense. Because the NFL, everyone's getting faster and stronger. So what's the next uh, twist? Well, who can make the explosive plays? Malik Neighbors is as explosive as they come. I personally think they are both home run picks. If one goes at seven and Atlantic's the other one at eight, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, right? Remember there was a, 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 there was a time frame where people were arguing who's better, Julio Jones or Antonio Brown, when they were both at the top of their game? The reality is the answer is yes. They were both tremendous. And I think the same can be true for Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze. Now, if you were to pick a wide receiver, who would you rather have, Neighbors or Dunze? Get in the comment section and let me know but down below by typing the initials for the player you would rather have. I like them both, but I am leaning towards Malik Neighbors. Now let's move on to another player on Mel Kuyper's big board. At number 10, it was Dallas Turner. Don't worry, I'm not going to neglect the edge rushing unit here. So Dallas Turner comes off a very productive season for Alabama. 14 and a half tackles per loss, 10 sacks, two forced fumbles. So you can check the productivity bus, uh, box. And he also has the God-given physical traits that you look for in an edge rusher. Size, speed, strength, bend. He's got the whole package. But here's what Mel Kuyper had to say on Dallas Turner. He's not the caliber of pass rusher as former teammate Will Anderson Jr., who went number three overall in April. Turner had 60 quarterback pressures from 2021 to 2022 while well, Anderson had 130. So, when Anderson was always getting to the passer first, it's tough to judge the other guy. And this is what makes evaluating Dallas Turner so difficult. But I'm just not as high on Turner as other people are. It's not his fault that he was lined up opposite of some great edge rushers like Will Anderson Jr. that got to the quarterback first, and so... Obviously, they couldn't really get the spotlight on them until their final season in Tuscaloosa. But ultimately, I'm just not where everyone else is on Dallas Turner. I, I do think there is something, to when you play in an Alabama Nick Saban defense, there's going to be a little bit of extra spotlight that comes to you. You're kind of going to get you're going to get the benefit of the doubt more often than not. And ultimately, I think Dallas Turner can be a good edge rusher. I just don't, as of mid-February, I'm not sold on Turner being worthy of the eighth overall pick. Now let's move on to some other guys on Mel Kuyper's big board. Brian Thomas Jr., really good wide receiver out of LSU at number 11. We got some offensive linemen entering the mix now. And then we get a run at corner. Cooper DeGene out of Iowa at 13. Nate Wiggins out of Clemson at 14. Terrion Arnold, number 15, out of Alabama. So let's take a closer look at those three corners because there's a good chance the Falcons could be targeting cornerback in this draft class if they don't think A.J. Terrell is worthy of an extension, if they find an edge rusher or a wide receiver in free agency. Maybe they go with a bit of a safer pick and corner, and I think these three guys are pretty safe picks in terms of very low bust potential. Now let's start with Cooper DeGene, one, 207 pounds. Seven career interceptions. He had three pick sixes with Iowa in 2022. And think about it, that 2022 Iowa defense that had Lucas Van Ness, Jack Campbell, both first round picks. Riley Moss went third round. But Cooper DeGene might have been the best of them all, but he stayed for an extra year in Iowa City. Now, unfortunately, an injury in practice in November ended his year for the Hawkeyes a little bit early, but he is sticky in coverage. He's got great ball skills an excellent run stopper, and he's got the big play factor. If not for a, just an awful officiating job, he would have had a punt return for a touchdown against Minnesota. We've seen him take it to the house before. He's kind of got the whole package. So what's the issue? Did I just say it out loud? He's a white corner. People don't want to trust white corners. They are unicorns. They do not exist anymore. But if you think that he might be the next great white hope, then Cooper DeGene is the next white corner in the NFL to stick. I mean, I'm just saying the quiet part out loud. We're all thinking it. Now let's move on to the next corner, Nate Wiggins. He is six foot two, 185 pounds. And if I could sum him up in two words, 
long and fast. He's got the length of a corner. You know when the combine rolls around, people make a big deal out of how much someone weighs or a quarterback's hand size. It's like, what are we doing here? I've always said, if there is one measurement to look at, it is arm length, wingspan, and height for a for a cornerback. Because six foot two for six foot one, that inch, that half an inch, that's the difference between a pass breakup or getting mossed. And you want to have that extra bit of length as a corner. And then the speed, the ability to recover. If a wide receiver beats you off the snap, to not be completely sunk in the first second of the play, that's an incredible ability that Nate Wiggins has. Now let's move on to the third guy on Mel Kuyper's big board, which is Terrion Arnold. Six foot tall, 195 pounds. He's got loads of experience, okay? 21 career games played, six interceptions during two years as a starter in Tuscaloosa. He's a shutdown corner. If there is a cornerback in this draft class that I'm going to say is going to be a starting cornerback for seven, eight years guaranteed, it's Terrion Arnold, which is why he's my favorite of the three. And I'm honestly game to go corner in round one. I understand that at this moment, edge rush is a huge need for the Falcons. Historically, they've never really had one since John Abraham almost 20 years ago at this point. We're getting close to that, at least 15 but I don't want to panic pick an edge rusher. I'm not in the business of just taking an edge rusher because you need an edge rusher. Everyone needs an edge rusher. But when you finish 7-10 and for a third straight year, you have more than just one need as a team. And if the Falcons feel like one of those three corners could be a Pro Bowl caliber player, go create one of the best secondaries in football in A.J. Terrell and one of those rookie corners. And I'll tell you what, Bryce Young, Baker Mayfield and Derek Carr, they may not have a pass rusher breathing down their neck, but they won't have an open guy to throw to. And whoever you do have a pass rusher, they're going to get to the quarterback because those corners are going to give them some extra time in coverage. Now, before we get on to the rest of Mel Kuyper's big board, I do want to fill you guys in on an awesome deal still going on at Fanatics, which is this Falcons hat and t-shirt combination if you want to get some new falcons gear in your wardrobe go to chatsports.com slash atl combo i put that link in the comments and description of today's video so make sure you check it out today if you want to get this awesome falcons hat and t-shirt combo moving on here to mel kuyper's big board 16 through 20 Leatu latu the outside linebacker out of ucla Quinion Mitchell from Toledo, the do-it-all DB, who was the star of the Senior Bowl. Then we got another offensive lineman, and then another offensive lineman. But in between those two guys up front, I'm sorry I'm not giving a lot of love to the old lineman. I just know the Falcons aren't going to take one. You've got Jared Verse, an edge rusher out of Florida State. So let's talk about the two edge rushers, because I think these two guys of those five players are the most likely selections at number eight. Latu and Verse. Jared Verse stayed for an extra year at Florida State, and he put up some really productive numbers for the Seminoles. Latu Latu is a very interesting story. His career was over, or so he thought, at Washington, where he started his collegiate career off. Then he transfers to UCLA, gets some medical clearance, and put up, put up phenomenal numbers for the Bruins. Now, the NFL, all their team doctors, they're going to do a lot of medical research on Latu and whether or not he is physically fit to play in the National Football League. But if everything checks out, these are two edge rushers to watch for. I think eight is a bit on the early side for them. But still, if Atlanta falls in love with one of these two guys, maybe they don't care what all the national media says about where they're supposed to go, and they go get their guy, which I'm not afraid of. And to wrap up the big board, we got Tyler Guyton, an offensive lineman out of Oklahoma. Darius Robinson, defensive end from Mizzou. His stock has been rising lately. J.J. McCarthy, Michigan quarterback at 23. Amarius Mims from UGA. And Keon Coleman, the Florida State wide receiver, who only knew one thing and one thing only, scoring touchdowns last year. Now, J.J. McCarthy of the bunch right there is probably the most intriguing to Atlanta because we said this before on the channel. 
But I keep going back to Raheem Morris's press conference when I asked about what he's looking for in a quarterback, elite processors, and what are all the NFL scouts saying about J.J. McCarthy? He is an elite processor. Some people think he might even be the second best quarterback in this draft class. I've got my concern. My concern is not so much about J.J. McCarthy as a player, like what we've seen from him. It's what we haven't seen from him. And that's a lot because they ran the ball a ton in Ann Arbor last year. And so that doesn't create the fakest shake to get a good idea of what J.J. McCarthy is as a passer. But I am not on board with using the eighth overall pick on a quarterback who I think threw the ball 20 or more yards down the field, something like 40 or so times in 2023. That's just too small of a sample size, too risky of a selection. We could talk about J.J. McCarthy in round two, but the eighth overall pick, when you pick top 10, one, you don't want to be picking top 10 unless you have someone else's pick. Two, if you are picking top 10, you have got to make it count. And J.J. McCarthy at pick number eight, it's just too risky for me. Now, who do you want to pick at number eight? Let me know down below in the comment section which player from this year's draft class you would love to see the Atlanta Falcons select with the eighth overall pick. Now, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate those of you that take time out of your day and come hang out with us here at Falcons Today.